when they come from school, home should be the first place children come to. Sometimes uh, what we do to avoid, especially when you have conflicts with them, or you, have, you are so busy or whatever, you pick them from school, you dump them somewhere. Maybe, I don't want to use the word dump, but that's what I've used. You take them somewhere, maybe to an uncle, or to an auntie, maybe because you are busy or you'll not be at home. But I wish they could at least step home and stay there for a night or so and talk to them and hear their stories. And then they go somewhere else. Children need to get back to home chores. When children get back from school, they need to get back to home chores. Sometimes when we get our children back from school, all we are thinking about, oh my dear, let them have a rest. They have been so busy. Let me tell you, children of these days are not like us who worked at school, sweeping, cleaning classrooms with a roster, mopping dormitories. Our children don't mop. Most of them, they have cleaners, they have, you know, they don't do any work, they don't dig. So when they get home, they need to get to chores and learn the chores. I'm not saying they throw away their books, no, but they also need this part of the growing up. Then children need to get back to home people. When they get back home, they need to integrate into the lives of the people they left home. Sometimes when they get home, they get into their own cocoon and they don't want to mix. So it is on us parents to ensure that our children kind of get together with other people. We could do it maybe during prayer time, or maybe we, when you send them out to shop with those people, you can find a way that they get back. They don't get just to their bedroom. Children need to get back to the home environment. Sometimes when children come back home, they create their own environment, which is like school, pack books there, put it here, the suitcase, you know, they don't want the home environment. They want to get out maybe to eat food, or open the fridge, get back to their kind environment. They need the home house, the home compound, the home church, the home neighborhood, the home children, the home agents, the home shops, Food, markets, gardens, wells, clothing, prayers, Bible study, cows, fellowships, transport or no transport, sleep, sleep patterns. Remember at school, some of them, they sleep so late. Eh? Like they read or they wake up in the night and read. When they get home, they need to get into a pattern of sleeping rightly. Then they need to get to home visitors. Some of them, when visitors come, they don't want to get out and greet them. Now I'm talking about children of today, young and old. Even the young children, they don't want to greet. They'll pass you. Young as nursery, they'll not greet. They need to get home and know that they are mates, they are servants, they are workers. They need to greet them, to thank them. Then they need to get back to clothes that are worn at home. I realized that many schools are struggling. When they give the children uniforms, I'll call them children even when they're at campus. When they give them uniforms, they cut them. So, and you at home, you may be that uh, parent who doesn't care. But for me, when the children get home, they have got to get back to the home length of dressing or home morality. I don't know what to call it. modesty. They have to be modest in how they dress and carry themselves. At school, I sometimes I don't even know what goes on there, but I know that at school many things go on that we don't know. But when they come home, they need to get home and be into the home clothing, home animals, birds. They maybe you even eat in sending it, it's not there at, at, at whatever. Maybe there are mosquitoes at home, you don't even have nets. You know, they need to get back home and be at home and not make you feel like home is the worst place. This place, Banangi, oh my God, I wish I was at school. Oh, I am missing my friends. No, you know, one time I told my children, you people, almost four months in a term or three months in a term, you are with your friends. You are with us only three weeks. Please give them to us. We need you, you need us. And they really understood. It took time, but they understood. They would be like, but mommy, you know, they've just come back. And they, I want to call my, I said, Neda Banang, you're not calling your friend now. You have been with that friend for all those three months. You are coming home and you want still to call that friend. Bambe, please. Hmm? 
at least let's first interact and get to, you know, get back to know each other. Because remember when you went back to school, I also didn't call you as soon as you went back. Unless some of you parents do it. But for us, when you raise our children, we usually leave them to go and get involved in school. And then call after some time, maybe a two weeks or so, a month. And then they also need to get involved in the home joys and sorrows. Are there barriers? Are there weddings that they can attend? That's not, when the children get home, engage them into those things that are homely so that they don't stay at school while at home. In brief, every child needs a home to get back to when they are coming from school. I also say these things, children need parents or caregivers. You are there because children need you. And you need to play your role. Because you are a caregiver, you need to care, even though the children are in university or they are at the whatever level, even though they are 18 and above, you need to care for these children. Recently, um, my son came, came like around. And as soon as he came, I told him, you know what? You must be hungry. I went, I got the food. I got what you want. I have this drink, I have this food, I have this. Will you eat this? Yes. What about this? You know, care. You teach them care so that they also care for others and you later on in life. Children need to have basic needs met by you, the parent, if you are able to. If you are not able to guide them on how they can meet these needs with your support, maybe they need to milk the cows and get milk and maybe sell, go around selling it. Maybe they need to dig and plant these crops and then harvest and then sell. You need, you need to get involved in their in meeting their needs. They need to be nurtured and guided. They need to be disciplined. Disciplined now, in the olden days, discipline meant a, a, a road. But uh, this time round, not all the time, maybe some few times, but not all the time. And not as many as we used to get. The world has kind of changed. Children need to learn survival skills or soft skills. I don't have the time to say all of them. One of the, the, the things that I always marvel at is when I go to homes and children cannot greet me or cannot greet visitors or do not. They can stay in their rooms and even refuse to come out. Or when, even when they come out, they pass you. You know how our houses are built? You pass through the sitting room to the kitchen. They can pass, go to the kitchen, get something to eat, pass. And you look at them and they're not greeting you. So those survival skills, how will you go to a workplace and work with colleagues and you're not greeting them? Hmm? They need to learn certain things. How do you handle conflicts? I will not say much. Then children need the world outside home. How to cope minus parents if I am not there? How will my children cope? I need to prepare them. In your mind, you know, of course, we, 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 we sometimes we, we tend to think that that means you think I'm going to die tomorrow. Oh, no, please. Even though you live, these children will not always be with you. They may go and live somewhere else. Even when you are 90 years old, they will not be with you. So prepare them for the world without you. Children need love, care, and comfort. Tell them you love them. By the way, I was told by my family that I was the, the most, either the most beloved or one of the most beloved. I never, I never knew that until I grew up and they said it. I never really felt it. I just felt I was the last born finished. I could wear everyone's whatever. People would pass on things to me. I would get things somehow. I had so many clothes and what, but I never equated it to I am being loved. Why? Because love was not spoken. We need to speak love and speak it as much and as loudly as we can say it and express it. 
Tell your child, I'm doing this because I love you. Because I care. Because I am concerned. It's not because I want you to not to do it just for the sake of it or to control you, no. Okay, children need to be happy. Give them times of joy. I mean, allow them to have joy. I, I am not talking about orgies like going into discos and you no know, bad parties. No, but you can even have maybe a cake at home. Or you can invite friends or you let them go to friends and but nice friends choose. Make a choice where they go, the homes they interact with. Children need to learn to manage challenges in life. All of this is done in holidays. Because the moment a child leave, starts schooling from nursery, you are with them like three months only in a year. The rest of the nine months, you don't have them. So the moment you have them like this, these are the things you're supposed to do. Because remember our parents, for them, they never went to school. Our grandparents never went to school. Our parents went to school for a short time. So most of the time they were at home. So they were learning these things. But for us, oh my God, we have smanya phones. We have what gadgets. We have Zoom. We have children are so much engaged into other things. And home is like the last thing they come to. So when you also get them, grab the opportunity. Children need your politeness. They need your firmness. They need your example. They need your understanding and many other things. Um, in other words, children need to embrace home as a place away from school or a time away from homeschooling where there is also another type of learning. How do we prepare our children? Prepare your heart to receive them. Now, before they return, prepare your heart to receive them back home full time. That is if you are not going to give them out to somebody to look after them, or you're not working very far from Uganda, and you know they are living alone. Prepare your heart to receive them. Even when you are living far, uh, call, make a call. Hmm. Sometimes when the children are about to come back, we are so scared. We don't know what to receive back, what we're going to get back. Because some of these children are not as nice as their name is child. They are different. Prepare how to handle them, bear with them, pray for them and pray with them. If, if they don't want you to pray with them, just pray for them. Because their kids will tell you, ah, mommy, don't even tell me those prayers, they don't even work. Daddy, ah, me, I'm tired of those things. Some of you parents who have such children, you understand what I'm talking about. And those of us who don't have them, we may not even understand that these things happen. There are children who tell you, I don't want to go to church. Don't even tell me. Even though you are a reverend, me, I don't like those things. I'm fed up. From the time I was young, church, 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 I need a break. So for just such children, pray for them. Talk to a friend. Go for counseling. How do you deal with such children. And then before they return to school, there is, you know, they, they tell you, they usually tell you at school, these children will be picked on this date. Try to call them or make it a habit for them to call you that mommy or daddy on this day, we are getting holidays. Eh? Let's not that teacher be the one to always tell you or the headmaster or the message from school, train your children to call home that I need to be picked. Will you come and pick me, Daddy? That will be. Will you be there, or oh, it is Mommy? I, is it the driver? Then you hear what they are going to say. But also, if you can pick them yourself from school, you can buy some few welcome items, maybe a flower, a cake. You know what they like, like nice food, pork, chicken. You know those nice food things. Have some time or minutes of listening. Usually when my kids, especially the girl, when she comes back from school, she has to feel. So I, I sit and listen and listen and listen. And I laugh. So then I sometimes I give advice. Sometimes she's done actually gives you advice over the stories she has told you that happened at school. She tells you how she handled them, how she dealt with this one. So give them time. 
ask them what do they plan to do in those holidays or in the holidays. Sometimes they have their own plans. They'll tell you, mommy, first week I'm finishing all my homework or assignments. Then week two, I'm doing this. Then sometimes they have their plans. If they don't have, try to help them plan. Ask them how many hours of rest or days they need to get back to normal. Sometimes my children, when they get home, I would ask them, and I get to school, it must have been tough. How long do you need to rest? Maybe a day or two, I'll get back. So I give them like, hmm? I don't wake them up very early in the morning because they've been waking up. I give them a day or two or three or whatever, as we agree. Do not hand over the phone immediately. Some of you parents or us parents, uh, one time I did, not even one time, but I did it sometimes. And then uh, it wasn't nice. So I decided, no, when they come back the first days, they are mine. I don't know whether that's being selfish. Anyway, we have question and answer. But we decided that when they come back, there are things they need to first not have, like the phone, wait, especially those in secondary school and primary. College, no, that one is hard to control because they use them all around. Then reorient them about home. Some of you don't even know that those children even forget where the doors open from. Eh? Or where, because some of them, their brains are so used to school that when they come home, they forget certain things. You see them turning this way, they're like, eh. I thought I was, we used to do that. We would come home and switch on the lights. Some of you who grew up in the villages, I would get home and, and it gets dark and I try to switch on the light and I say, hey, this place is the kids. I am in the, in the village, I am at home, there is no light. Then update them about what has been going on at home, about their relatives, about the maids, about the compound, the cows, the chicken, the what, the joys, the sorrows, also update them, make them your friends. But some of you are like, ah, those ones, that's not their business. I cannot start talking to children. Who will talk to them? Someone else will, and they may give them wrong information. So let them know that they are important. They need to be updated. Hey, Jaja so and so visited us. Uncle so and so menange bambed died or whatever. Hey, this thing happened. So and so gave birth. Update them. Then assist them to get back home to get back to the home routine by work, waking them up, for example, reminding them that duties. Or sometimes when they are big, like 16 and above, sometimes you need to keep quiet and watch and see how much they can remember, how they can take over. Yeah? Because sometimes those 16s and above, they don't be in the morning, in the evening, not this time. No, watch and see. If you see that there is a gap, then you feel that gap. But if it's not there, then thank them. Yeah, you still remember that you need to eat food at one. Hey, yeah, that's great. I haven't forgotten. No, mommy, I know what goes on here at home. Okay, nice. So withdraw from certain duties and just make comments or reminders. That would be nice for them. Then um, you could, uh, I put some, what or some things that you can say. For example, oh, you've delayed to wash dish dishes today instead of, why haven't you washed dishes? The dishes have been here the whole day. No, 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 you say, hey, you've delayed to wash the dishes today. When do you plan to wash them? What are you preparing for our lunch? I guess you fed the animals. When do you plan to take out the animals to grass? We need grass to cover the blocks. You know, some of you, you, you make blocks. I don't know whether I'm talking to only Kampala people, but I believe that if they are village people, you, you, there are certain duties that you do that Kampala people don't even think about, but some people make blocks or bricks and that's how they get their money. Or you can say things like, it's better to go to the well earlier to avoid lying. So hurry up and go to the well and collect water early. So try to kind of show them like they are responsible, but you're only reminding just but you know that they know. Okay, find out about any age appropriate Christian fellowship, conference, retreat, or so, and send them or ask them if they would love to go. If they say no, find out why. If you 
can convince them, try to convince them. If you can ask a friend or a pastor to call them, please do, because they need these things while they still have the time. Link them to good families. Families of like minds. And those who are a bit different, but they are good. Because they need to live in a world beyond you. Prepare or let them prepare a duty roster that changes regularly. For example, daily, weekly, fortnightly, holiday, or per holiday, as per the chores or duties at home. When you stay, you know, for us, uh, one of the things that we agreed was that when a child learns to do something for a long time without change, they learn resilience, persistence, endurance, patience. But every time you change things quickly, 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 one day you go to the gym, one day, they don't learn to be persistent on something. They always want change, change, change. Those are the people who change jobs every year, every few months. I'm tired. These people are bad. They want to live and go. And they keep grumbling. But when they learn to do one thing over a long period of time, some of them, it trains them to have those vacuums. Take them out or let them shop as you wait along. Take them out and shop or let them shop. You can be in the car. They have already made a list. They go out. That is part of engaging. They they go out and shop and ask for accountability. I gave you how much? 200,000. Mm -hmm. Give me accountability. In, out, balance. I trained them very much in those things of accountability. And so like the guy was working in some company in Essex vacation, they were all shook. He went and sorted out their petty cash that had been not, had not been sorted out for a very long time. Everyone was wondering, this guy, how did he learn these things? It is because at home we've been doing it and we are both accountants, not necessarily that we went to school and did accounts per se. No, we learned it maybe through short courses, but also we practice it. Okay, attend some, uh, let me see. When you choose to attend a function with these children, as I told you, that is a way to engage them, do it with caution and keep your eye on them. Who are they interacting with? What are they doing? How are they dressed? Check their dressing even before they get out of the house. Some of us parents just say, hey, love of it. okay, bye. And then we don't even know we are in the office. They just go dressed anyhow. And we don't know. But some of us want to see which dress I'm going to wear. This one, okay. Put it on now and I see that it still fits you. Okay, Kali, you can go. Okay, have them learn the habit of reading books. I'm not talking about school books. Those are important. And those ones, I know you that you do that very much more than anything else. But have them read other books, maybe about biographies of good people. Maybe uh, you buy for them books, life stories, doctrine, which is easy, simple doctrine, Bible study guides, newspapers, Download some ebooks that are important. Let them learn how to sing. Sing with them and dance and clap. Be happy. Visit your home up country. Visit some people that maybe they've not seen for a while, but also a ride up country is nice. And you know, Christmas is coming. Let them get involved in Christmas. How? You and me know what goes on in our churches. Have your children participate. And also at home, let them be the ones to put up the tree, to decorate, to choose what food you will eat, where you should go for Christmas. Let them participate. Ask them, do they really want to go to this place or they want another place? They want a change or they want to stay home. They may say, oh, we are tired of hotels. We want to stay home. Fine. Then they stay home. I think I have talked. I may have more things to say. I have many Bible verses, but because of time, I don't want to read them. Let me see. Yeah, our time is fast spent. I, I am done. I'll stop there. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much, Auntie Deborah. 
the passion is very evident and clear even as you present. Thank you for loving children and for giving your life up for these children that God has put in your care. And thank you for accepting to come and speak to us about uh, preparing our children and involving our children during vacation. Thank you so much. I know many ladies, fathers and mothers on call, um, they want more tips on how to engage and that's why they came in big numbers. Thank you so much for reminding us the, play, the importance of accountability, involving them, checking out on them. What are they doing? How are they dressed? Thank you. And to you, our Mr. Mgawe, Diora's friend. Thank you so much for helping my sister. Yes, God bless you, bless you. Um, Mary was saying very insightful conversation. Thank you, Auntie D. By the way, it's very unique, but in their home, they are all Ds. <laughs> Deborah, uh, David, mm -hmm, and the children as well. D, 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 D. Yes, uh, we thank God. So, Auntie Deborah, there are some questions that are coming in here uh, for us to engage with. Um, someone is saying that they only have um, uh, they, their babies, their children are young, six and below, but yet they are finding them very, very active, active, and most of they love to spend out of time on TV. So they are wondering how can they engage this active group? One said that she has a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old. Very active, and they keep fighting. That they are wondering how can they <laughs> engage them and use that energy that they have. So I don't know what you have to say. Thank you, John, for finishing the names. I do want to mention the children's names, but I see John has mentioned them in the chat, Daniel and Docas. <laughs> so that's why he was saying they are the Ds, Ds, Ds. So Auntie Deborah, please, you can respond to that. This one with toddlers, wondering how. Sometimes she gets overwhelmed because the energy is so high. So how can you advise? Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, I think one of the things we need to know is that that is a time that you really also need to be <laughs> very creative. Buy different things. Not television. Actually, for us, they would watch television, I think, one or two hours. And there was particular cartoons they used to watch. I, th I don't remember them. There was a time they used, used to watch Tom and Jerry, but then it got bad and we told them, ah, that one, stop it. So you need to be creative. You need to buy toys, uh, bike rides, walks. Uh, what I do not want children to do and which was an abomination in our home was fighting you fight you know you will get a beating you could not fight in our home that was not acceptable because i would tell them who told you you need to beat your sister or brother who gave you the authority even though they are younger because the younger ones actually sometimes are more stubborn they want to beat the older ones so don't ever allow your children to beat each other but about being active you have got to make sure that you buy things that will engage them, but also have a maid or a helper who loves children and will play with them. Take them out of the house. Some of us have small houses, that's the other challenge. So the, one of the things we did because our house was also small, we removed everything in the middle. No tables, no tools, what do you call them? Coffee tables. They were not there. The whole sitting room and dining was free for them to run, to do what, to play, to kick the ball, to, you know, just be free, but also learn to dance with them. And also the other way to keep them engaged and you don't get tired is time. Time is very important. Make them sleep early. You will rest. But some of you let your children sleep at 10 at nine, and one parent told me, if you know I don't, they don't sleep with me, they will never sleep. What? Six, for us, they'll be eating food. Seven, prayer, eight, bed, latest. So that the rest and you also rest. I don't know that I've answered your question. Puzzles, 
jigsaw puzzles, my kids could arrange puzzles which like were for big people because we started them young. We'd buy them puzzles, blocks, what? And there were two, but somehow they kept themselves engaged. I don't know if I've answered your question. Yes, you have. Thank you so much, Auntie Deborah. Another one comes in from a, a mother of teenagers. Very worried about the teenagers who are indifferent about working, not interested at all about doing house chores. And uh, of every time there are reasons why they shouldn't be involved and she feels like she's failing as a mother. What do you have to say to this desperate mother to the teenagers who have seemed to be so indifferent to working? They don't see the importance. You can just advise on that. My question is then who does the work? She may not answer me that who does the work? Because when they're indifferent, we I don't care as long as they do the work. Because I'll not bring another person to do it. I tell you, you have to do that one. And I have to find it done or to see you do it. For example, when we came here where we are, my kids had never used uh, firewood and ndagala. Ndagala, yes, but not so much. So when we came here, oh, I said, opportunity. We started using firewood on purpose purposefully for them to know how people feel in villages. We cooked on firewood for like three years. And it is in lockdown that I told them, now I think you have learned. So don't provide an alternative because sometimes we tell them to do work and then the results were made. So let the maid have a break. She can even be there, but she's having a break. Or let her go home. For me, my maid, I told her, go and learn things. You take her for training in something. She comes back when work is done. If they don't eat, how will they not eat when there's no one to cook for them food? So my question is, who does the work when they do not do it? If your issue is that they get annoyed, it is okay. For me, I told them, for you to get annoyed, it is fine. There is no problem. With time, you will realize that it was only helping you. The challenge I have is that parents also get so worried, so stressed because a child is angry. And that's a stage. Remember also you were like that, maybe. Or somebody you know was like that. But when they grew up, they appreciate it. So don't worry. They don't want, they have to do it. And you have to be firm. Wow. I, I like that question. question. Thank you so much. I like the question you posed. Now, who does the work? <laughs> who does the work? Hope the moms and dads are listening here. Who does the work? So I think it's important to give the house help some break and holiday so that the children can also be engaged in the house chores. It's amazing. Really, we need to engage these children as early. You know, I keep sharing that for me, it's my father who taught me, um, I cooked my first meal with my father. <laughs> my, fa my father, we cooked together, it was on firewood. And uh, I don't know what had happened that day. I think there was no electricity and no what, and people were hungry. And so he called me and we did the peeling together. I struggled through, cooked, the food didn't get ready. But we later ate that food that didn't get ready. And I thank God that till today, <laughs> I'll never forget that experience. So when you say that work with them, dance with them, do things with them, very, very important. So parents, hope we are hearing and we pray that we can engage our children. Even fathers can teach their children how to cook, not only mothers. I enjoy eating onions because I learned from my father. When he's cooking, he puts all the big onions there. And so I, I learned that. So that's what I do also. <laughs> so friends, fathers, mothers, let's engage these children. They have to learn to do the work. Someone here posed a question uh, a bit more about imparting survival skills. How do we impart the survival skills, especially if they are lacking with the parents? How can the children get those skills so that they can be able to survive at all time and in every situation. Auntie Deborah, what do you have to say about that? Survival skills for the children. I didn't get that. When they lack parents, 
um, the question is how can we um, impart survival skills in our children? And the person is, is saying, even when they are lacking with the parents or the parents don't have those survival skills. So one is mainly the question is about survival skills. Yes, oh, how can okay. we impart the survival skills in our children? Okay, I'll also ask a question. How is the parent surviving? It means they're surviving on others? What? Anyway, if the parent does not know how to impart survival skills, and survival skills is basically good manners, knowing how to do work, living with others, and managing life on your own. So if you're the parent, you don't know how to do it, look for maybe a conference, a retreat, search for them, they are there. People take out children and they train them during holidays. Churches organize those things. You can also send them, by the way, one of the things I remember when we were young or growing up, they would send us to relatives. Of course, these days it's a bit tricky, but you send them to somebody you trust, whom you know can impart those skills and you let them have a holiday there. You can send one here, one there, or two, two, so that they can like kind of report on each other, or at least not be lonely. So that's another way. If you know somebody knows how to bake cakes, send them there and they learn how to bake cakes. Maybe you pay 200,000 or 300 to buy the ingredients and they stay there. We fear risking, but those are some of the things we have to do. I'm not sure if I've answered fully your question, but you need other people if you want your children to learn survival skills. Wow, thank you. And Deborah, the children truly, truly need those survival skills to go through life because retirement can come anytime, either by death or you being, you know, stopping to work at work, stopping to go for work. So retirement can come anytime. So we need to prepare our children so that they can face life in its form as it presents itself to us. So as Auntie Deborah has made it clear, seize all those opportunities, conferences, you know, different places where a child can pick a skill. Uh, in our days, we were raised by the community. You know, all the neighbors raised us. Today, it's different. Our children are fenced off from many others. They are in gated uh, homes. So what they learn or they do is mainly within the house. But when we were growing, for us, we used to move around, do this, do that. So we need to expose them so that our children can be in position to survive even when we are long gone. We need to be intentional. She posed another question. Then now is the parent surviving? So all those things that we've gone through as parents, I know let's not only give our children a soft landing. We need to expose them, push them a little bit so that they can be able to uh, Re, um, be able to obtain those skills that they need. Praise the Lord. There is a question in the chat. One was wondering, uh, there are those children that love to ask very many questions. And some of the questions are a little bit embarrassing. Or So one is saying, is it right to dodge them, to dodge those questions that may be tough? How can one respond to a child who is very inquisitive and overly wanting to know about everything and asking. Auntie Deborah, what do you say about that? It really depends on the question and the age. I remember my, my, one of my children told me, mommy, where did we come from? I told them, they were still young. <laughs> I told them, you know what? I, went, I took them to the sitting room. There was a photograph, our wedding picture. So I told them, you see, mommy and daddy there, yes. Uh, we were allowed in church to have children. That's how you are allowed. You go to church, they wed you properly, then you come. So when we, we wedded, they wedded us. Of course, they didn't understand much. When they wedded us, then they go, gave us like a certificate or like an allowance to have children. So that's how we had you. So then they asked me, but exactly how? 
And you know, we have two children and they are so funny. So they would, one would follow the other and listen. So they were like, but exactly how? I said, you know, you will know. You will surely know, but not now when you are in the I think one was in P2, another one was in me, maybe middle. So I told them when you reach grade five, six there, hmm, even in school, you will learn. If in school you have not learned all, come back to me and I'll tell you the rest because you would have grown. But you have got to be allowed first in church to have children like you. So when the question is so embarrassing, you, you see how to deal with them or ask someone, a counselor, how can I answer such a question? But sometimes children ask questions that are just silly. So you need to also tell them, no, that one, you don't need an answer. Because there are kids I know who will say why and why, if that is that, and then why. They just want to make you a fool. So you need to know which type of questions are they asking. Is it to really know which is important? or it is just to make you feel like you don't know. I don't know which type of questions the parent is talking about. There is nothing embarrassing to me. You just package it nicely. You don't say that and you went and I slept with your daddy and you know, you don't say that. No, no, no. There is how you can package something. Thank you so much, Auntie D. Somebody talked yes. about boot camp. What is boot camp? Somebody asked me about a boot camp. <laughs> What's that? Mm, there are some, a boot camp is more or less like uh, an activity or set aside for young boys or girls to engage in vigorous activities, life skill activities, or teachings. So it's a camp that is not necessarily spiritual. It okay. is not spiritual really, but it's more vigorous and, you know, so something like that. Okay. If it's Christian so, or if there are Christians monitoring it, then that's okay. If they are not, be careful. That is true. That is true. Uh, that's, that's a good response. We just need to find out the, the value system the value systems that they are, you know, they using the foundation of the boot camp, and that will help us in making the right decision. Thank you so much, uh, Auntie D, for that. I think those were the questions. Uh, we've been blessed, so we are going to get into a time of prayer. But to you, mummies and daddies on call, to whom much is given, much is required. God has entrusted us with his children, we are simply custodians. So our ministry starts at home. We are called to be holistic. <laughs> we are called to give the children, to expose the children in all aspects of life. So we pray that our boys will learn how to cook as well, our girls would learn how to cook. Someone made a comment at the beginning that they also knew how to make bricks. So we need to be those children that can be all round. The children, our children need to be trained in the way that they can all be all round. All round so that they can be able to survive. That's why one person was asking about survival skills. We train them to be all round. Use every opportunity to teach them how to dig, how to cook, how to do, because we don't know where the world is going to throw them. So we need to expose them. And I think parents on call, uh, we, need to always look, we need to always look forward to the holidays. Holidays are good opportunities for you and all of us as parents to pour out our lives into our children. Because they spend most of the time at school. And so with the holidays, we have them to invest in them. Please plan and come up with activities. And it's also very good to have a schedule at home. Who is doing the, um, the mopping today? Who is doing the breakfast today? Who is doing the dishes today? I know some of us may be having dishwashers, but during holiday, we close them, turn them off, and let the children learn how to wash these dishes. 
So that rotor will help you. And also having a rotor for co-curricular activities, a rotor for going to the market and shopping with them so they can learn the skills. We are living in this information age. Our children are so exposed. One day we took the young people, children for camp and it was a children's camp. I had prepared uh, teachers on how to talk to children about sex. So we had a session, we had a session with the teachers while I was still at St. Luke's, we talked to them, tried to prepare them on reaching to the venue for camp. Uh, I decided to talk to the six and below because that is a little bit a sensitive age group and how you bring this message out matters a lot. And so we divided into other groups, but then there are some parents who literally failed some teachers who failed to talk to their children up to their age, the groups they had to talk to them about sex. One who, was, one who is even a clergy just left the, I think it was around um, nine and 11, nine to 11, that age group, he just failed to talk to them even after the training. So when I engaged the children six and below, I wanted first to know what they knew. I posed a question to these little boys. <laughs> oh my goodness, my goodness. Six and below knew so much. The young boys would come and say, Reverend Lydia, Reverend Lydia, me, I know what sex is. This is what some of my friends have told me. Some of my friends have those pictures with when this and this happens. These children are exposed and sometimes you don't know where they get the information from. When they get the phones, you might think they are playing simple games, but they are going on YouTube and exploring all sorts of things. So in this information age, we need to be interested in them and supervise them. Yes, we talked about the different apps that can help us detect what the children are watching online. It is important that we have those apps as well as monitoring. After they have used the laptop or the phone, say for homework, go back and see their history because the computer can give you that. Go back and see their history. What have they been engaging with? So we need to be intentional. We need to engage them uh, outside, involve them in co-curricular activities, involve them in house chores. When it's time for engaging the mind, yes, we allow them, but we supervise them so that they are not exposed to dangerous content. But yes, we need to train them. The earlier we speak to them on sensitive issues, say sex, the better. So we pray that God will equip all of us, equip every parent on call, so that we can nurture and train these children in the way that they should go. And indeed, they will not depart from the right path. Thank you once again. We are going to pray. Thank you, Aunt Deborah. I think it would be good, Aunt Deborah, for us to hear at least one or two words from Mr. David Mugawe. I know he always speaks to us. I don't know if uh, Mr. David is around. Mr. Mugawe, he can say a word and also pray for us. Isn't that Mr. great? Mr. Mugawe, is, uh, he, he left, he has a meeting. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Um, we are going to pray. Uh, Reverend Gillian, I will ask the IT team to help me make Reverend Gillian a co-host so that she can come in. I think she's dropped off as well. And Reverend Gillian, I think has dropped off. Great, let us pray. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for loving us and granting us this opportunity as your children to sit around, uh, to sit at your feet through these different screens and gadgets to listen to your word. Thank you, because you've spoken to us. We only pray that we are able to put in practice what you have taught us this evening. I pray for the mommies and daddies on call, aunties, uncles, guardians, grandma, grandpas on call, so that they can be able to train and involve their children during these long holidays and vacations. Please help us make the right decisions. Help us be interested in these children. Help us spare time for them. 
I pray for mummies and daddies who are so busy so that they are able to create time and engage with their children. This is a grand opportunity you've given to us to be with our children. Please help us pass on um, wonderful survival skills so that our children will be able to survive in life anywhere and everywhere. We pray, Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, that we shall not only think about them passing with good grades, but they will be holistic children, excellent at school and at home. We pray for their social skills because lately, most of our children, because of this information age, they cannot relate well with their friends. So we pray, dear Lord, that these are children can be able to relate well. We pray that you preserve and protect them from dangerous content that comes from the net, say pornographic material. But our prayer is that Lord, in this generation, in this information age, our children will be prepared that even when they're exposed to this dangerous content, they will know how to avoid it and how to deal with it. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, help the mummies and daddies on call so that they will be confident and fear nothing in order to speak to their children about anything and everything. Holy Spirit, we pray that you guide the mummies and daddies on call and everyone on call to give the right choice to their children, supervise them, not to criticize them, not to condemn them, but to train them that when a child fails to do it well, that they will be corrected so that the next time they will do it well. We pray, Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, that you fill us because you're our helper. You are the best chef. You are the best nurturer. You are the best everything. So we pray that you will impart in us all the skills that we need so that we can raise your children for you and to the glory of your name. In your mercy, we pray that you meet out, me reach out to all the mummies and, and everyone on call, daddies, aunties, uncles, so that they will be as well exemplary to their children. That the children will watch their mummies and daddies work. That the children will dance with their mummies. They will dance with their daddies. They will play with their mummies. They will exercise with their mummies and daddies. They will generally have a great time with their parents this holiday. Thank you, dear Lord. Receive the praise and glory. My sisters and brothers, may the Lord bless each one of us. May the Lord turn his face towards us. May the Lord smile over us and in. may his mighty hand rest upon every home represented here. All our holiday makers, our P7 Vakists who are home, PS4 who are returning, S6s will be returning soon. We pray that Lord, you be upon them and go before them and that blessing make all of us a blessing. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, and amen, and amen. I'll hand over to you, Daisy. Um, Daisy has asked me to step in. Thank okay. you so much, Deborah. Thank you so much, Reverend Lydia, for coordinating us. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending. We shall lean on the everlasting arms and the Lord will help us. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting May the Lord bless you. Bye.